inside these tatters lives treasure. A vintage Singer featherweight sewing machine. I'm told it's in rough shape, so you better brace yourself. Yeah, yep, it's definitely seen better days. I want to get this sewing again and give it a new life. I've repaired vintage sewing machines and other gadgets before, though nothing quite on this scale. How hard could it be? I can see that this adventure will take a good long while, so I'm going to document this as a sort of vlog style, with semi-monthly updates. I don't even know yet if it can be repaired. And that brings us to the topic of today's video. Evaluating my treasure. Is it in as bad a condition as it looks? Can it be restored? Do I try to recreate the fresh off the factory floor look? Or is there room to be creative? Right away I see a lot of water damage. And although it is sad, this sort of thing happens. I am filled with a huge sense of gratitude for the person who decided to give this machine a second chance rather than doing what so many would do, send it to the dump. Well, I see rust, corrosion, water damage, water dripping, condensation, more water. The paint is flaking off in places. And the box is in even worse shape. Most of all, the stink of mold overwhelms. Beneath the decay, the machine looks almost complete. I see a thread guide missing, but other than that, there's nothing obviously wrong with it. It has even some of the extras like the oil can, some fun feet. Here, take a gander at some of the goodies. I feel like I'm investigating a treasure chest and discovered a map to buried riches in the distant lands. Perhaps at this stage I'm being swept away by the romantic ideal of the result. But I'm okay with that. This is a lot of work, and I'll happily latch on to anything that gives me momentum. 
The first step on this treasure hunt. Find the serial number and learn more about my new friend. Here it is, on the bottom. Okay, this part is just legwork, or I should say finger work. And the part where I show you one of the reasons I love working with Singer machines. There is an avalanche of information available on the interweb. Perhaps too much. What I want to know. When was it made? Then I can celebrate the birthday. Now, note this won't be the actual day it was made, but it makes a nice landmark. Birthday cakes all around. Where can I get a manual? This is essential. Preferably for free. Gotcha. Now, to find out if there is something spectacular or special or peculiar to this machine, something that would increase the value or make it rare in any way. And most importantly, I want to know if my working on this machine would decrease the value. Nope, it seems to be a pretty generic featherweight and one of literally millions. I am free to do what I want. What I don't want is to make this project any harder than it needs to be. So I am going to digest what I've just learned. And while I do that, I'll take you outside to get some gratuitous animal footage from the farm because it's a YouTube video. I know from working with vintage and antique machines that the hardest thing to fix is a bad repair. So I'm going to take this project slow and use the least invasive means first before trying stronger methods if necessary. And research. Always research. And evaluating what I read before acting on it. For example, I'm pretty sure the advice to flood my motor with canola oil or any oil is a quick way to ruin my treasure and maybe burn down my house. So, research means more than just reading, it's thinking and experimenting. With that in mind, I am going to tackle the mold smell, because I can't work with this. It stinks. The majority of the mold is making beautiful patterns on the black case covering. I can't see how this case covering can be saved or that I can get any useful information like measurements off it, so I'm not going for perfection. As I work on it, the box continues to disintegrate. It's going to need re-gluing at the least. Most of it is solid wood, but where there is plywood, it's delaminating. What a fun word, delaminating, delaminating, delaminating. It's so much fun to say, but not so much fun to fix. But that's a problem for future me. And yet, there is more promise than first appears. I quite like the wood, so staining and finishing is an option. Or I could cover it. I have yet to decide. There, 
that's better. Come to me, my treasure. Let's see if the parts move by gently turning... Oh, nope. Nope. The smell is still too strong. There must be something inside the machine that's gone moldy. Oh, no. What is this? Noise reduction? Something to catch the oil drips, perhaps? This is the type of question manuals are good at answering. And yes, it looks like it does both. This feels like card or heavy paper. Whatever it is, it's dripping wet and falling apart. It looks easy enough to make a new one. So I take the measurements, and in the garbage, that goes. There, that's so much better. Where was I? Tea? Nah. Let's get on with it. I don't want to operate the machine with the foot down, as this could damage the foot or the feed dogs. Eee, that doesn't want to move. I'll put a drop of sewing machine oil here and here. Go and have another cup of tea while that works its way in. Now apply gentle, steady pressure. Et voila! Now let's see if we can get the machine turning. This balance wheel turns with the top coming towards the operator. Turning it the other way can cause thread jams and unnecessary wear on the machine. I'd be happy if it turned any way at all. I don't want to force it in case I break something difficult to repair. So instead, let us slather some fresh sewing machine oil at all of the normal oiling points. Leave it overnight in a warm place. That usually does the trick. Hmm. Well, it didn't this time. Let's start taking things apart to see where it's binding. Overnight, I did a bit of research and discovered that the featherweight is famous for jamming if the thread is caught anywhere near the bobbin assembly. This looks more like rust than thread, but instinct says this is the place to start. As a side note, turning the balance wheel in the wrong direction is what usually causes the thread jamming. Hint, hint. Let's get the bobbin case out and see what we can see. Ah. Perhaps the most fragile part of the whole machine, and of course, it's going to be the part that's stuck. <sighs> okay. What is supposed to happen is I pull on this lever and part of this slides to the right and releases the bobbin case from the machine. Sewing machine oil and time isn't doing the trick here either. I don't know. It ain't moving. I can see some rust in the cracks. I'm loath to try anything stronger as it can easily cause more damage than it repairs. The wrong chemical and I've damaged the paint. Then again, the paint is pretty well beyond salvation. I could also try tapping it, but any nick or scratch in this part of the machine would cause a lot of trouble later. And I'm not even sure yet that this machine is salvageable. So I'm going to leave you here and return to my good friends Google and DuckDuckGo and see what insight they can share. Have you got any ideas on how to get this bobbin case unstuck? And on that rather unimpressive cliffhanger, I wish you happy sewing, repairing, or whatever your cup of tea. Mmm, tea. Trust.
treasure.